Welcome to Her Fantasy Football. You can hear us on Blog Talk Radio slash Her Fantasy Football and on iTunes. Make sure to subscribe to HerFantasyFootball.com so you can get our newsletter with our injury reports. Also, don't forget to look at our rankings before you set your lineup for week two. Ooh, and a friendly reminder, make sure to tune in to our radio show on SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Network from 9 to 11 Eastern on Saturday night, where you will get our four ingredients for our fun diced game. I mean, if you're already registered for Her Fantasy Football, you'll get it first in the email. But then you can also get it again on our SiriusXM show on Saturday nights. It's already there, baby kids. Go check Ooh, your email. Already there. Early if you're special, weekend. you know. If you're know. special, you know. <laughs> Subscribe, HerFantasyFootball.com. You can also chat with us on Twitter at HerFantasyFB and on Facebook slash HerFantasyFootball. I'm your host, Courtney Kirby, and I'm here with my lovely sister, Brandon Marianne Lee. Just the two of us. Mm. You can make it if you try. Just the two of us. I like how you picked that high key. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, I think it's going to be bad. It might as well be really bad. <laughs> Why try to do something I can do? Just just go for it, right? Don't you wish you had one of those snap filters that has a voice changer in real life? Hey, <laughs> yeah, hey we're talking about fantasy football for week two. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, I sound like a, what, what appears to be a deer voice yeah yeah, squirrel, yeah 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 squirrel. bunny yeah. something stupid it's amazing <laughs> it is amazing it is amazing um ashley is in chicago with family uh our thoughts and prayers go out to her and her husband and family they lost their grandmother um this weekend so they unfortunately are there for a funeral um love you but hopefully you did well in your week one. Do, 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 do. Brandon dominated our mother in our family league. And yeah. I beat my husband by like less than two points, I think. So, oh, But he had that algorithm. Yeah. Well, luckily he, I was working. So we didn't for Monday night. So, I, you know, that was good. I got home and he was asleep, so that was fine. Um, <laughs> but he was in good spirits. He was good spirits. It's week one, so anything can happen. You never know. Uh, Ashley didn't win in our family league, but she kicked Brad Evans' bottom in our um, Hamilton league, so that was great. Um, hopefully you did well as well in your leagues. So we're going to get you prepped and ready to go for week two. All six, or all 32 teams are playing this week, so no unnecessary buys for week one. We are all in in week two. So we'll start off with the Thursday night game. We got the Houston Texans, the Cincinnati Bengals. Ooh, those Texans. Mm -mm -mm. Tom Savage, where are you? Oh, it was so hot. I was like, what's so the hot. hotness there? Tom so hot. Savage. It was savage. Get it? Savage. They were <laughs> savage to Tom Savage. Take it Woo! down. Woo! To be fair, though, that offensive line, though. Mm. So bad. Oh. oh, my gosh. So I we're in a two-quarterback mm. league with tons of players in it, and I have Tom Savage. I had to start Tom Savage this week with, um, oh, God. Well, I had Ryan Tannehill go down. And you, this is the Scott Fishbowl League where you can't pick. Oh, yeah. Everybody's already taken, right? So there's no quarterbacks to be picked up. Um, so I had Tom Savage as like a third quarterback who I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm never going to use him. Well, I had to use him in week one, and I only used him for the first half. That's fine. Got me three points. It's good. Um, which, you know, is almost as good as some of the other quarterbacks who played all four quarters, I must say, in week one. It was mm. not It was not amazing come around thank goodness our top quarterbacks which we'll get into throughout the show have much better matchups this week other than maybe matt ryan so that is a positive thing um but yeah so deshaun watson was the guy for the second half will be the starter this week i have him on the bench though i don't think there's any need to put a rookie quarterback in your lineup that is on a team that has an awful offensive line that we just we just saw right in front of our face so bad so bad hmm. uh i mean he may look better than tom savage but it still wasn't great so I, i'm not risking him against the Bengals of all teams to try to start him i don't think so deandre hopkins he is in my start position and here we go again hopkins will have to rely on this quarterback being effective this year he was targeted 16 times which is 
a big plus, right? Um, but he only caught some of those targets, and it wasn't necessarily his fault. He got overthrown a lot too. Um, so because of the bad quarterbacks and a tough defense, it's going to be rough for him. But you knew that going in drafting him, that it was going to be a tough quarterback situation for him. Um, so I'm going to put him down in the wide receiver three category. So if you have two wide receivers and then a flex, you may want to look at a different flex option instead of DeAndre Hopkins this week. Lamar Miller, um, the good news is that you can run on Cincinnati. Miller should see even more work this Thursday. I think the Texans play plan on running a lot against the Bengals. He only had 65 yards rushing last week, but he did catch both of his targets for 31 yards, which is very promising. He also needs to find that end zone, which might just be a problem with the Texans, not so much a Lamar Miller thing. Um, but hopefully this week they'll be able to just start off with Deshaun Watson, get a groove going, and hopefully just make it down the to the end zone at least once for the Lamar Miller owners. Uh, and then for the Cincinnati Bengals, A.J. Green, this is not a great matchup. Listen, I told you this before you drafted him at the beginning of the season. A.J. Green does not have a good schedule. So you're just going to have to play him because you drafted him knowing he wasn't going to have a good schedule, right? You're not going to bench your stud. He had 74 yards last week, which isn't bad um, at all, especially for – you know, the awful day that his quarterback had, which we'll get into. Uh, and listen, those running backs, Mixon Hill, Bernard, well, Bernard was the only one to get over 25 yards. Woohoo, Bernard. In fact, he got 79, which isn't awful if you had to play Bernard, but I'm not sure you would have played Bernard. Um, seeing how he's the third running back on the depth chart. Uh, but Mixon led the running backs with touches at eight, but only managed nine yards on the ground. That is awful. And mm. there's a difference between a timeshare of running backs when it's two, but when it's a solid three running backs sharing the ball, yikes, yikes. I do not love this. The Texans are not as hot against the run as they should all, they, but they should all be just okay. So none of them are going to be great in my eyes. And I just, again, have to see somebody has to come up above them all for me to start any of them. Tyler Eifert. So Eifert didn't have the game we all thought he was going. What well, we were hoping for, as did a lot of not you know tight ends that were in the top, um, and Sean that we maybe reached a little much for in the draft. Um, but this week may not be much different either. The Texans only allowed one reception by tight end last week. I'm kind of scared. I say go get a tight, go get a backup tight end now. If you're not holding one, I think you need one. And I know that's scary to say, but yikes. It's Just not this good. week, it's a bad matchup. It's a bad matchup, and it's going to be all season long for all of them, but Eifert does have the best schedules out of all of them, so just throwing that out there. Andy Dalton, oh, Dalton. Mm. Clear best quarterback of week one, 170 yards, no touchdowns, and four interceptions. I do say in that league I played Tom Savage, I have A.J. McCarron. And just fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> no way. Oh. Maybe you never know. You, maybe he'll fake an injury like Jay Cutler always does. You never know. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't get much better than that. It was a complete disaster. Here's the good news. Nope, I got nothing. It's nothing. I can't talk about the hard schedule. It's done. It's a no-go for this week as well. John Ross. Ross will be making his NFL debut on Thursday. Um, but, again, I'm not expecting much yet. But keep an eye on him. Um, if he's on your waiver wire, keep an eye on him. He might be what you want in life. All right, fantasy football fans, listen up. If you love fantasy football, then you need to try my new favorite app, Draft. It's weekly fantasy football, but not like the other guys. On Draft, you play real live snake drafts with other people, just like in your season long leagues. Here's how it works. It's a draft that lasts for just one week and there's no management. Just set it and forget it. Once you're done drafting, that's it. No trades, no waiver wires. Drafts even take care of last minute injuries for you. Draft starts every couple minutes so you can join one right now. And the best part, play for cold, hard cash. Draft starts for just $1, so there's a draft for everyone. No salary caps. Play in real live snake drafts just like you play with your friends in season-long leagues. Come and join me on Draft today. Download the app anytime. Just search Draft in your app store and join a game in minutes. Or play right from your computer on PlayDraft.com. Whatever you want. For a limited time only, all new players get a free entry into a draft when you make your first deposit. Put your, um, But you have to use this show's promo code HFF. That's right. Play for real money game for 
free just for using the Her Fantasy Football promo code HFF on your first deposit on Draft. Just search Draft in your app store and go to Draft or pl- go to Draft, excuse me, PlayDraft.com and play free with promo code HFF. All right, game of the week. Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens. Woo! Okay, you guys. I actually do think this is going to be a fun game. I was yeah, impressed with game. the Browns. Of course. I you actually, always are. yeah. You know what? Like, maybe my expectations are just so low for them. Absolutely. Uh, that, you know, it's okay. Next week, I'm a little more pleased. A little, That's okay. A little pleased. Yeah. Um, I, you know, listen, Isaiah Crowelli got 19 of the 26 running back touches, 17 of the 20 carries. He is the bell cow back, but this is a tough matchup. And warning, he only ran for 23 yards. He did catch three passes for 30 yards during the last mass matchup um, against the Ravens. So, so it could be a rough matchup, but listen, a lot of these bell cow backs had some rough outings last week. You probably have to start him. Uh, so, hmm. Hmm. Mm. Sleepers, I'm going to go with Corey Coleman. He clearly is the favorite guy for Deshaun Kaiser. Um, He only has eyes for him. He caught five of the six targets for 53 yards and a touchdown, which is loverly. I'm not worried about the cornerbacks and the Ravens, um, but I am worried about how Deshaun Kaiser is going to deal with that pass rush. I'm hoping it's not like Andy Dalton. Yikes. Anyway, well, um, yeah, Andy Dalton and Kaiser. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's like I mean, Andy Dalton's no like Tom Brady, but I mean, he is a veteran in the NFL. He's, you know, he's been doing it for a long time. Um, it'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's put it this way: uh, the Ravens are just building up their confidence mm-hmm. moving forward. Mm-hmm. So good for them. Uh, Duke Johnson, listen, I, you know he's on the bench. You can't start him in this bad matchup for sure, uh, regardless. Frankly, uh, but it's a little bit worrisome that he was out touched by Matthew Days. You know that guy? No. Him, Matthew That's Days. Uh, he was only There's been a few of those guys this week, huh? Yeah, a few of them, huh? Yeah. So he only uh, caught two of his five targets for 20 yards, and he was not involved in the running game at all. Hugh Jackson said that was just part of the game script for that particular matchup, but still. Mm. Kenny Britt, mm. he had a drop, and like Hugh Jackson. Uh, so he went one for three uh, for 13 yards only last week I think that his fantasy stock is way down if you need to drop him to add one of these like newer guys I would do it I I don't think he's going to bounce back to to where we want him to be at least he might be functional and like good matchups he'll have a good yeah he'll have good games and but he'll have mostly bad like not good enough games not good enough um and even in ppr settings it looks like Corey coleman is just running away with it so sorry bummer uh and then i'm not touching any of the tight ends or a rookie quarterback going up against baltimore but again i was impressed with kaiser against the steelers so that's something to build upon i agree I agree. All right. And the Ravens, Brandon, what about those Ravens? Well, Justin Tucker, always. Uh, Woodhead's hamstring is expected to miss six to eight weeks. If you have an IR spot, I guess you can add him. They did like him a lot. Um, But man, he's been incredibly injury prone over the last few years, playing only 21 games in three years. I think you have to move on. Uh, So does Ashley, who really covers this team. She did the notes on him. Uh, He won't come back until around November. So you really, I mean, unless you have a couple IR spots and you're really desperate at running back and you're worried deep league uh, or something yeah yeah i just don't know about this one uh games are very the game was very heavy on the run 42 runs compared to 17 passes terrence west um was kind of um forgotten about in the draft but he rushed for 80 yards and a touchdown on 19 carries um that's probably what's going to continue happening. But Buck Allen played in 33 of the 66 snaps in the Ravens week one win over the Bengals. And interestingly enough, West only played in 27 snaps. So, hmm. Uh, he also had two more carries than West. It's a little early to tell if this ratio is going to hold up, but it looks like this could be a committee situation. And a committee situation without Danny Woodhead. Uh, so there's one less person. But one less person. Hey, that's uh, better than a lot of the teams out there. 
Yeah. Two, two fighting for the job is a lot better than three or four. Yeah, but if you were a David Johnson um, crier right now, I think we're all just crying for those of us. Yeah. David Johnson. Uh, and DeForest Allen is still out there. You can definitely go pick him up. DeForest Buck Allen, depending on what platform you're playing on. Brashad Perriman caught one of his four targets for five whole yards. Mike Wallace was only targeted once, which only for eight yards. Macklin was the only one to get a touchdown on a 48-yard pass, but he totaled 56 yards on two catches. But the problem was they didn't need to play offense because Andy Dalton threw four touchdowns or four interceptions. I mean, well, touchdowns for the Bengals or for the I know it's Ravens. Tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's hard to know. He scored a lot of points. It just wasn't for the Bengals. Right. So it was for the Ravens. So, yeah. so they didn't need to do a whole lot of passing. So they didn't because also, you know, Flacco's just coming off of injury. We, again, we just have super no idea what this about offense Macklin. Like. Super, happy, super happy that Macklin was involved as much as he was with not needing the passing game. Right. Two, I mean, well, I, I only was, caught two I, passes. But. It does. I didn't even care. That was more than I, I thought maybe was even going to happen. So no, I, I'm I happy. Agree. Yeah. So Joe Flacco, um, yeah, he mentioned Michael Campanaro maybe taking the place of Danny Woodhead. That's a stretch. Um, people think he's kind of like Darren Sproles, but that's a stretch. So, again, you know, it's just a name to kind of put in the back of your pocket right here. Uh, it wasn't Joe Flacco's best week, but, again, he didn't need to. He was 9 of 17 passes for 121 yards and a touchdown and one interception. He only threw the ball 17 times. This guy was fourth in – pass attempts last season that's how much they were killing the Bengals. so like i mean just you you almost can't even look at this game for stats because it just was such an outlier so there you go yes all right we'd like to take a moment to thank another awesome sponsor pristineauction.com that is p-r-i-s-t-i-n-e auction Dot com. Pristine Auction is the perfect place to find that perfect piece of sports memorabilia for your man or woman cave. They always have a daily auction and a nightly, always something perfect for a fan of any team. So listen, there are authentic items. Authenticity, almost, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. everything. They get their items from trusted sources and it's probably more affordable than you think. You could pay up for something like J.J. Watt signed Texan jersey for $93.45. Or throwbacks like John Elway signed football for $20. I think Brandon might like that, the little John Elway jersey. So go check it out right now, pristineauction.com. Quick, free to register, free to bid. Lots of great items. A great, again, that is pristineauction.com. All right, we got the Buffalo Bills, the Carolina Panthers, the Bills. All right, LaShawn McCoy rushed 22 times for 110 yards and added another 49 yards on five catches. Well done, McCoy. I was rather worried that you were going to be shut down a bit, and not necessarily by the Jets, just the fact that you're the only person on the team, but you didn't. Congrats, congrats. Uh, if you were nervous about the Bills putting McCoy on a snap count, don't be. Don't be. It's going to be fine. The coach says he has a, no plans to back off LaShawn McCoy's workload in an effort to keep McCoy healthy. So it's balls to the wall. So you might not, that doesn't, so obviously they're not putting health first, which isn't great for your season long, maybe. But for now, you're good. He should be happy. He should continue to produce. And that's Charles Clay. Hey. Hey. Hey, other people on Sirius making fun of us for the Charles boom, Clay boom, boom. call. Take mm -hmm. it. Take it. Sorry. Sorry, the man is always sorry, questionable. Sorry. The man always plays. The man always gets like eight targets. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. He is the main focus of that offense. It's not pretty. I mean, I wouldn't want Charles Clay to be my main target on my offense, but it is what it is. He did something with it, and there you go. 53 yards and a touchdown. Boom, boom, boom. Tyra Taylor loves him, and so do we. Um, Zay Jones was only targeted four times and caught one pass for 21 yards in week one against the Jets. Jordan Matthews had a stronger showing, catching two of his three targets for 61 yards. Um, 47 yards of the 61 yards was off of one play, but hey, if you're only going to catch two, does it really matter? Fantasy points or fantasy points? He pulled a Jeremy Macklin. That's right. And the easiest matchup, so, um, this is not the easiest matchup, so you might want to stash them on your bench this week and keep evaluating them. Um, hopefully they will become even better for your fantasy team, which I think that I think there was potential. So Tyra Taylor, Tyra Taylor is um, 
as predicted, had a good game, completed 16 of his 28 passes for 224 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception, but who didn't have one? Oh, that's right. Uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, he also added 38 yards on his feet. He looked good. He was the seventh highest scoring quarterback last week, so he's right on the streaming line of being in that top 10 quarterback for the season like usual. It's not pretty, but it, it happens, guys. I'm it happens. so glad because I told my sister-in-law to start him over <sighs> i can't remember who somebody good well definitely over scott tolzine which was one of the options oh god and i was like oh no 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 no, no. but um it was someone else too i think it was maybe eli manning i was like nah tyra taylor but then i sat there being like oh no what if eli does well it's always the worst when you suggest things to really close friends or family yeah yeah uh, Mike Tolbert is an intriguing flex option, especially if you lost Danny Woodhead or David Johnson this week. Short of a trade, you will not be able to make up for David Johnson's loss, obviously, but it's time to bump up your other guys and to find a flex. He rushed 12 times for 42 yards and one touchdown. So they're going to use both backs because guess what? That's where they're the strongest. It is what it is. Carolina Panthers, Newton, ooh, completed 14 passes for 171 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, again, against the 49ers. So, no, he did not have a fantastic week. We knew he was going to use the run. Um, it does concern me. It looked like he was in pain during the game. Like, he kept, like, rotating his shoulder after deep passes. Um, I don't love that. So it might be a bit of a slow start. But again, they have the easiest schedule, so don't give up on them. It's just that it might be a more of a slow start than I was expecting personally. Um, I, hey, and I'm highly invested in the Carolina Panthers. I own every single one of them, um, at least on some of, on some on one of my teams, you know. So, um, but it, it'll be fine. He'll he'll do he'll do okay. Uh, Calvin mentioned, okay, again, he only had one catch for 25 yards. Uh, that stinks. That is not what owners are expecting, obviously. Uh, but the outcome was less about Benjamin's ability than again, them giving it, giving up the pass and just focusing on the run against the San Francisco 49ers awful rush defense. So it was really a no brainer for the coaches. Um, that won't always be the case. Benjamin gets winnable matchups this week against the Buffalo secondary that make the jets look so bad. So I say, start him again, guys, start him again, Greg Olson. You're going to start another tough week. It doesn't matter. You drafted him. You're starting him. We told you to start Jonathan Stewart. Hopefully you did. He got over 14 fantasy points. Mwah. I mean, I guess it was against the 49ers, but still, um, it no, was, a true I think they're going to, I think they're going to continue this. That's what's going to say. It was a true timeshare between yeah. McCaffrey. And that's what I said. Sometimes it works like Melvin Gordon and Danny Woodhead worked. It was a one, two punch. Right. And I think it's going to be the same thing with Jonathan Stewart and McCaffrey, especially while Newton's shoulder is sore. Exactly. Right. Cause he wants to do short passes. He wants to get the ball out of his hands because he doesn't want to get hit. And there he's going to be using his running backs. So, I like both of them. McCaffrey rushed 13 times for 47 yards and caught five passes for 38 yards against the 49ers. Again, this wasn't an amazing performance, but I think it'll only get better. Um, earlier in the week, Coach Ron Rivera used an awkward analogy about how McCaffrey is like a new Christmas toy that you don't want to play with too much or you will ruin it. Okay. Uh... <laughs> What what was Christmas like at his house? Oh, it's so good. Well, you know, back in the day, like sometimes those toys you don't even take out of the box. You know, it's like so precious. It's so collectible, you know. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember that. Listen, McC I, I was ripping open the box and playing with my toy. Well, you're much younger than him. McCaffrey remains the most talented <laughs> Not running that back much on younger. the team. Yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> but the timeshare with Stewart will continue. I don't think it will really hurt owners. I think it'll only be beneficial for both of them. Devin Funches is going to be on the bench until Cam Newton can really prove himself. And I wouldn't be fooled by this Russell Shepard dude that got over 11 fantasy points. The majority of his points came on one 40-yard touchdown pass. Um, he was only targeted twice. I I'm not buying in yet, my friends. I'm not buying in yet. All right, we have the Arizona Cardinals and the Indianapolis Colts. I think Russell Shepard, though, is one of those guys that if you play DFS, though, he's a good dart throw because he does make these big plays happen. did it in Tampa Bay, too, but only in good matchups like San Francisco. Right, and again, like they have a really great schedule. So based on the schedule, you can do that on maybe on DFS. And I'm not saying like if you have an extra spot, 
pick them up and put them on a bench and just kind of hold on for a second. It's my, I'm a cautionary person when it comes to um, wide receiver threes on teams. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. For the most part. I mean, unless. Especially if their quarterback can't throw. Right, exactly. Especially if he's yeah, rotating his shoulder every single time he throws a pass. It's kind of scary. All right. So I know that move because I have bad shoulders. Yeah, I know you Actually, do. I know that move. I'm going to do it right now. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So the Arizona Cardinals against Colts. Wow. Really? Anyway, um, David Johnson uh, will have surgery on his wrist this week. He'll be out an estimated two to three months. Uh, but Bruce Arians says that they're hoping to get him in time for Christmas Eve game. It's over. Just let it go. There's nothing else really to say. I think you need to trade for someone. I, I think this is this is not a just, I'm going to pick up Tariq Cohen on the waiver and hope that this PPR guy works out. I think that you need to really think about, like, if you have, hopefully you listen to the show because we really hit on a lot of our sleeper wide receivers. Like a lot of the people that we liked in the, in the preseason are doing really well. So if you were able to get some of those wide receivers, I think you can actually fill in with those. I don't think there are a lot of running backs you can fill in with. I'm not seeing it. Um, we'll give you some options throughout the show, but I, I think this is going to be really tough for you. I think if you have David Johnson, you need to toughen up and look for trades. This is when he got hit and it was on the ground. I thought it was, I thought it was like, Oh my God, that's a spleen. That's a kidney. That's an organ. Like that hit was directly in his gut. And I was so concerned that something like he was bleeding internally. And then they're like, it's a wrist. I'm like, hmm. yeah, it's, it's not good. And then it's not good. Williams is supposedly going to be the guy that comes in, but then they also re-signed Chris Johnson. They have Andre Ellington there. I don't think this is a plug and play guys. And worse than that, the Arizona Cardinals offense stinks and Carson Palmer may be done. I'm incredibly worried. So even if the, if Kerwin Williams was the guy, which again is not guaranteed, I'm not quite sure they're going to get down to the end zone enough to, for him to fall in. Okay. So I, I think this is a tough situation. Again, we don't normally advocate trades here. Frankly, we're kind of all conservative when it comes to trades. Cause we usually draft a team we want. I only draft players I want on my team. So I don't usually want to trade them away. Sorry. I don't understand that mentality, especially for week one, but David especially Johnson is not going to come back. So we need to rethink the whole year. If you, have David Johnson on your team. So um, Larry Fitzgerald did not have a huge game, but he still caught six of his 13 targets. Now I think 13 targets was generous because I don't know what Carson Palmer was throwing, but I don't think they're called targets. <laughs> I think some of those are a tough not. game. I don't think Carson Palmer is going to continue to have tough games. I hope not. Uh, Larry was able to go for 74 yards. Listen, if you're playing PPR formats, that actually was a pretty decent game. If you looked, there were a lot of, there was a lot of bad football this week. A lot yeah, sure of bad week one football. So sure uh, there you go. Um, Larry is obviously still a PPR starter for sure. And even in standard leagues, you guys, like, get it together. Uh, listen, sleepers, the Browns, it's still complicated. Jerron Brown was not even targeted last week, uh, which is intriguing as he's listed as the wide receiver two on the depth chart and uh, of officially targeted in week one. John Brown, on the other hand, caught four of nine targets for only three. 32 yards. JJ Nelson, while not a Brown, is part of the carousel of wide receivers not named Larry, and he had the most productive day out of all of them, catching five of his six targets for 43 yards and a touchdown. It's too hard to know who's going to be there, and again, it's just not a great offense, so you need to look elsewhere. Bench, Carson Palmer, 27 of 48 pass attempts. That was part of the problem, too. Stop doing this. Stop making him throw the ball 40 to 50 times a game. He's an old man. This isn't nice. Uh, anyway, he did uh, score one touchdown, but he had three interceptions, only 269 yards. So, uh, listen, we thought that Palmer could be a streamer, but we were wrong. Uh, I, I don't. I, I know this is a good matchup against the Colts, but, man, I, I'm not ready to do it. Uh, speaking of the Colts, Andrew Luck's already ruled out again for week two. So, um, no for sure starters, that's for sure, uh, especially against the Arizona defense. Yes, I know the Arizona defense. Defense, Arizona defense got roasted by the Detroit Lions last week, but um, I think the Lions are pretty decent, actually. Uh, and, and their defense looked good too. 
Yeah, their defense. Which helps the offense. Down. Yeah, and yeah. they were terrible in the preseason, so maybe things are changing. Anyway, the sleepers are Marlon Mack. This is really interesting. If you are uh, not going to trade and you're looking for something for David Johnson, uh, Marlon Mack was an interesting option both in standard and PPR scoring. Um, the final score was 46-9 to against the Rams at week one. It was not good. Uh, but listen, Mac and Gore <laughs> split the carries exactly 10 apiece. Now you might be surprised that it was actually Marlon Mack who only went 24 yards, but Gore went 42 on the same amount of carries. Here's the thing. Marlon Mack is an East West runner and he's really annoying to watch. And then Frank Gore is a North South runner. And that's why he gets more yards. However, it's that East West and kind of that shiftiness that he was able to have only one catch off of his one target, but it went for 21 yards. The fact he's getting as many touches as he is, is a little worrisome if you have Gore on your team. Also, it means that they might be transitioning a little bit. So you want to keep your eye on that. Volume is key there. And if you have a deep bench, do it. By the way, Turban, not a factor. Very intriguing. T.Y. Hilton did uh, get seven targets last week. Again, targets, a kind word for what was going on with Scott Tolzien. Um, he is the undisputed number one, though, you guys. By far led the team on targets. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have a quarterback. Jack Doyle caught two of his three targets for 41 yards. Um, listen, they're going to go with Jacoby Brissett. I never pronounced that name correctly. Um, and they might he might rely on a tight end. So he's an intriguing option. Again, not a great matchup. Gore. He's a beast, but Arizona defense, meh, and he's sharing time with Marlon Mack now. Dante Moncrief caught only one of his four targets, but it did go for 50 yards. Of course, it's Dante Moncrief. But listen, boomer bust player. We knew that. Yeah. One one catch. There you go. Jacob uh, Jacoby Brissett, come on now. He's going to be better. By the way, he scored more fantasy points by only um, throwing three passes for 15 yards than Scott Tolzien did last week. He did. He actually wow. scored more points. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love. Tennessee Titans of the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right. Delaney Walker, he saw nine targets for 76 yards. I love him. I don't care. I think it's amazing that he had the team high in catches and yardage, even with the addition of Davis and Decker. Mariota loves him. This won't be an easy week for him, but you're still starting him. DeMarco Murray, he only rushed 14 times for 44 yards. He did have two catches for 16 yards. It's not amazing for us Murray owners. Um, Henry did have six six carries away from him. I, I... I'm mixed about how I feel about him this week. I think we have to like temper our expectations on him. Um, I don't think it's going to be one of his biggest games, but you're going to start Murray. Uh, Marcus Mariota, 18.84 fantasy points. Nice a little opener from him. Um, even though Mariota was unable to throw a touchdown pass, he ran for a 10-yard touchdown pass. Mariota has shown that he will take what the defense gives him and his ability to run and will continue to hold the fantasy value that we all were hoping for. Um, Davis had 10 targets. Matthews had nine. Decker had eight. Um, so he's getting the ball around. He's evening it out. It's looking good. And I love him. Um, the, the rookie Corey Davis, as I said, had 10 targets, even though he was on the field for less than the, re the rest of the wide receivers. Um, he, but he got 69 yards in his first NFL performance. So not too bad for the Davis man. And I expect him to continue on and then get even better. Um, but that does not mean that there's not room for Mr. Richard Matthews, who I feel is the clear Mariota's favorite. Nine targets, 7.1 points. Um, he just needs to find that end zone. And I think he will. And I'm not concerned about it. Mm -hmm. Um Yes. So da, 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 da. we're going to, I have Eric Decker, um, on my bench. Listen, he was, is a terrible start. We knew that it was going to be rough for him to really in intertwine with this, um, team right away, but eventually he will. So it may come later than we're expecting, but dropping both catchable red zone targets is not going to do well for Mr. Decker and um, getting more targets, especially in those red zones where, you know, Walker could have caught that pass. I don't know. Matthews could have caught it. Especially because he's so touchdown dependent. If he's yeah. not going to score a touchdown, then he's not what giving me any fantasy do? points. That's right. 
So he's on the bench because he can't do what we need him to do to be productive for our team. So to me, he's on the bench until further notice, um, which it might be sooner than later, but definitely not this week. Mm -hmm. All right, the Jacksonville Jaguars, you are starting Leonard Fournette for the highlight of this team. He got to see all this reasons he was drafted so high. He rushed 26 times for 100 yards and a touchdown. He also added 24 yards on three catches. Beautiful. He's always a must start for you. Allen Robinson is done for this season with a torn ACL. Sorry. Mm. Terrible news. Terrible, terrible. Mm. Um, like two more Mar Marquise Lee and Allen Hearns to step it up, but both of them are injury prone too. So I don't know if they're going to stay healthy the whole season. It's going to be tough for struggling Bortles. The preseason he struggled, obviously. Um, I, there are obviously are better options than Blake Bortles. I'm not going to tell you to start him. Chris Ivory mm -hmm. is there a change of pace back when you when you need it, but I don't think it's worth it for your team. So maybe a flex at best, but I don't love. All right, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, the Eagles. Alshon Jeffrey had a pedestrian week with Josh Norman covering him most of the game, catching three of his seven targets for 38 yards. But Jeffrey should be considered your wide receiver to flex this week. That's what he is. You drafted him. You know that. There you go. Zach Ertz had a hell of a day catching all of his eight targets for 93 yards. Woo -woo. Ertz, uh, Ertz, Ertz, yeah. Ertz, mm -hmm. Ertz, mm -hmm. Ertz, mm -hmm. Ertz, mm -hmm. Ertz, Ertz, mm Ertz. -hmm. There it is. <laughs> his eight targets was tied for a team high with Darren <laughs> Sproles and Nelson Aguilar. Who is that guy? What? Oh, I couldn't believe that. I said there was like, ew. give me a freaking break. Ew. Give me a freaking break. That's what I said, ew. Uh, come on. I come on. Don't, I almost don't like the Eagles now. Uh, Tori Smith I, was only targeted three times. He I caught know. one of them for 30 yards in the Eagles. Now, listen, I am not a Tori Smith supporter. I never have been. I never believed in Tori Smith. My sisters disagreed. They thought. Tori Smith still got it. There's chemistry there. He's going to be clearly the targeted one. Um, I would have never said, well, Nelson Aguilar, obviously. Well, it, no, yeah. I would have never said that. I just didn't like any of them. Unfortunately, Aguilar appears to be the clear favorite in Philadelphia. Today. Mm, today. 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 I'm not, exactly. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, Eagles I'm not like down with that. Eagles like to switch things up, and it's not because they're tricky like that. It's just because they're trying to figure out something that works for the day. And I'm not trying to be the mean on that, but they're just a very immature team. Um, and that's okay. They're trying to figure it out. Um, it's Nelson Aguilar week one, might be somebody different week two. So just know that before you really like get super excited for picking him up off the waivers and putting him in your lineup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten Wentz looked much improved from last year, and I dare to say could be a great streaming quarterback. He completed 26 of his 39 passes for 307 yards and had two touchdowns. He also had one interception, but who cares? Um, it was a tipped ball, so we're not even going to hold it against him. Um, he has a tough matchup this week against the Chiefs, but keep an eye out for this guy in the coming weeks as a streamer. Not this week but coming weeks. Darren Sproles was the Darren Sproles we knew and trusted, consistent, nothing to write home about, but he rushed two times for two yards and caught five of his eight targets for 43 yards. Like Garrett Butt got the bulk of the rush attempts, 14 attempts for 46 yards, and he caught his one and only target for a one-yard touchdown. Boom. <laughs> Wendell Smallwood uh, did not have the impact that some people thought he could have on this team, including myself. I thought not that he was going to have an impact, but I thought he's a guy to keep an eye on, I should say. He rushed four times and was able um, to get a total of four yards. So, hmm. Blunt appears to be the guy in the backfield. Um, and Eagles placed kicker Caleb Sturgis on injury reserve with a quad injury. Uh, Arr, are they expecting him to be out eight weeks? Keep an eye on your kickers. Kickers matter if they're not playing. And we there's should. a lot of kicker stuff going on. And you know what? Actually, right. if you watched, it this was weird. the year of the kickers. It's the year <laughs> of the kickers. kickers. There's a lot of moving kickers. A lot stuff. of movement. A lot of things <laughs> happening. Um, but Caleb Sturgis, if you notice, they, they went for two and no one understood. And everyone was like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? It ends up because Caleb Sturgis couldn't kick. It was over. Yeah. Like already, like he was yeah. like, I can't. So it's really sad. So they signed Jake Elliott to replace him uh, for the time being. 
So we'll have to see how that goes. Brandon, the Chiefs. All right, Kareem Hunt. Uh, in case you thought that we were too high on Kareem <laughs> Hunt, I guess we were not high enough. The guy uh, <laughs> had the best rookie <laughs> opening performance ever after fumbling on the first carry. Ah, which so was good. So, so good. Crazy because the guy hadn't fumbled since high school. And he was and like I a loved, you know, I love that he fumbled and Andy Reid was like, I don't care. You're getting back out there. You're going to do your thing. We believe in you. Go get them. Or maybe Kareem Hunt was like, I fumbled. Okay. Brushed it off. And went, I don't know, but that was some serious mind control for a rookie against the Patriots. Amazing. And it was it was such a testament to his maturity, yes. which is one of the things you worry about when these guys come out of college and you're like, can they handle being in the NFL? Uh, it's very clear this guy just gets it. And, and against the Patriots in the opener when they just hoisted this whole Super Bowl thing and they got Mark Wahlberg out there and they got all this stuff going on, uh, which by the way, Bill though- Belichick's they, looking at you creepingly from the sidelines. He's like, it looks like Darth Vader with his like hoodie. You know, yeah. you just don't understand what's happening. It's scary. Yeah. Um, although I will say though, side note, best Star Spangled Banner of the year, maybe of my life, was that high school girl for the Broncos. Oh, I didn't see it. I was working, oh my so gosh. I didn't get to hear it. Was it super good? Uh, it was unbelievable. I thought, oh no, they had a high school girl do this. I'm going to know. Jeez, this is terrible. And then she started singing. I was like, dang, best I think I've heard in years. Other than Lady Gaga at the Super Bowl two years ago. That was really good, too. But it was like that caliber. Anyway, I'll, I'll, let me just say this. Uh, obviously, Kareem Hunt is the guy. 17 carries, 148 yards, and a rushing touchdown. Caught all five of his targets for 98 yards and two more touchdowns. He helped Alex Smith be a baller. It was really great. I think this team is built in a really great way. Tyreek Hill is obviously must start as well. And um, it was very interesting because I was getting a lot of sit start questions about him last week because everyone was worried um, about what his role was. I'm actually, is he's the only player maybe in history that I'm happy has be gone back to being more of a gadget player. Yeah. Like that's where he's best. I'm sorry. He should be in the kick returns. He should be running the ball and doing the passes and doing pitches and whatever the heck they want him to do. That's when he's his best. And he is better in prime time, you guys. I told you guys this on the show last week. Seven of his 12 touchdowns from last season came in prime time, and they're not a prime time team. So um, very interesting stuff going on there. I'm very happy for him. Um, and Travis Kelsey, I think the best thing that happened to you as a Kelsey believer and owner Owner is that Travis Kelsey stunk in week one. And I'll tell you why. The New England Patriots, I, at first I thought maybe he was still hurt because they were going to the backup tight ends, including De Demetrius Harris, who scored the touchdown. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh no, all these backup tight ends, is he hurt? No, what happened is they planned for it. Basically, the Patriots wanted to remove their best weapon, which is what they do as a defense. So they took out Travis Kelsey. So they were double and triple teaming Travis Kelsey. It was crazy. Like once I actually saw, because you know the cameras are weird sometimes and you can't yeah. really see. He wasn't limping or anything. So I was like, okay, what's going on? Double, triple teaming. Well, let me tell you, they got blown out. Yeah. Blown out by trying yeah. to shut down Travis Kelsey. So no one else is going to play him like that, you guys. That's not possible because now they have to respect Kareem Hunt. They have to respect Tyreek Hill. They, even they have, have to respect, respect Alex, Alex Smith. freaking Smith. <laughs> yeah, they <Yeah>. do. <laughs> and so, I mean, I think this is the best thing that's happened to Travis Kelsey's stock possible. In fact, if you can trade low for Travis Kelsey, you should do it. So yeah, I know he didn't have a good game, but again, I'm ignoring it because it was a game script thing. And the and actually, the Chiefs were genius. They planned for it. They knew that they were going to focus on Kelsey, and they were like, "Fine, take him. We got other guys." It was beautiful. Alex Smith is on my sleepers. Uh, listen, he he's not going to score four touchdowns again. That's just insane. Um, and something clicked with him, though. I don't know if it's Mahomes coming to town or what the deal was, but he definitely had a different suave, you know, je ne sais quoi kind of thing going on. <laughs> uh, and this is an interesting matchup, uh, you know, uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles. He may do well. I think he's more of a sleeper, though, than a starter, obviously, at this point. Cairo Santos completed six extra points, but he wasn't asked to kick a field goal, and he has been dealing with a groin injury. Again, year of the kicker. So uh, I would try to start someone else if you can, even though I do like Cairo Santos and they will score some points. We just don't know if you can kick field goals at a distance right now. Travis, uh, the Kansas City defense, probably a starter. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, listen, I 
you, you probably have to do it. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm not even going to get into that. I, I just think that the Eagles are kind of sneaky and weird. Like you were saying, they keep trying things to see if it works. Yeah. So, I don't, you know, they got a ton of turnovers and stuff. I just – I don't know what's going to happen with them. Um, and then Bench – Chris Conley and Albert Wilson were involved. Um, but, again, this was because of the Travis Kelsey thing. So Perfect. All right. Let's get to those losers. Both of them. New England Patriots at the New Orleans Saints. All right. This is actually going to be pretty quick. You guys, um, the Patriots are playing the Saints, and that's not the same thing as the Chiefs. So forget about the not Wipe Patriots it away. like thing. You want to start Wipe them all. Away. You start Tom Brady. Don't look at me. I know he had some bad passes. He absolutely did. He also took beautiful him. passes. You're and you him. drafted him. We did not tell you to draft <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm telling you, you also had some beautiful passes. So don't freak out. And not only that, but I'm going to start Brandon Cooks like crazy because they are targeting him down the field. And so yeah, good. his stat lines weren't fantastic against the Chiefs. But you want to know what? Anytime he didn't catch the ball, it was because he got a pass interference. And they're going to continue doing that. They're going to – they basically are banking on either a pass interference or Brandon Cooks catch at a distance. And, and that's do what they that do with lot. Gronk too all the time. Yeah. So they expect people to interfere with him. So they just keep throwing him the ball. Exactly. So, so you're going to start Gronk too. Give me a freaking break. It's the Saints. You're going to start James White because you know what? He actually led the backfield in snaps, almost doubled the amount of snaps as Gillisley. But Gillisley is the goal line back. So you're going to start him too because it's the Saints. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. his role. We saw that. Uh, but let me tell you, the sleepers are Chris Hogan because again, he's a boomer bust guy, everybody. I don't know what you thought. Everyone thought he was going to be like a top tier guy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. What are you talking about? Anyway, it was very weird. They had him carry the ball thir three times for 17 yards. I don't even understand what's happening in life. So, um, But he could be big again because it's the Saints. And Philip Dorsett, they even forced him in, even though he just joined the team. Um, listen, I, I mean, whatever. He didn't catch his lone target. But Amendola is still in concussion protocol, so it could be Philip Dorsett. Uh, again, Danny Amendola is going to be on the bench. Concussion protocol is not good. Uh, Dwayne Allen on the bench, zero for two targets, although Tom Brady's targets to him were not fair. They were not good. <laughs> if you saw that, this, they were not good. Those, those were his really bad it passes. It wasn't D. Allen's fault. No, to be honest with you. Uh, Deion Lewis, he was the starter, but he only played in six snaps. I don't understand life. <laughs> and then Rex Burkhead, stop asking me questions about Rex Burkhead, please. Just stop. Don't do it. All right, those Saints, let me start off by saying while the Saints did not look good, it's okay. Uh, you know, Oof. not like the Saints we know. They were up against a very tough opponent. With that said, Drew Brees is still a must start. His home, away, game splits historically are not great. But this game could have been much worse. So Drew Brees completed 27 and 37 passes for 291 yards. That's not bad. One touchdown. That's not great. To Kobe Fleener, who I started. Uh, Michael Thomas had a quiet night catching um. five of eight targets for 45 yards. Not the week you were looking for, but against... Again, you drafted him. You're starting him. I'm starting him. Mark Ingram rushed six times for 17 yards and caught all five of his targets for 54 yards against the Vikings in what seemed like more of a two-headed backfield than a three-headed, as we all saw, uh, especially on that sideline. Um, so it was more of an Ingram. And uh, we'll get down to the other guys later, I suppose. Bull Lutz is the starter every week in my book. Much like Michael Thomas, Ted Ginn did not have an incredible productive outing, catching four or five targets for 53 yards. But the good news looking forward is that he is very involved in the offense and on the field a lot. So 42 mm -hmm. of the 62 snaps. So that's that does bode well for him. Uh, as we said, Kobe Fleener had a pretty good game. Uh, <laughs> granted, beat that the bar set low for him and at the her fantasy football land. Uh, but he caught five targets for 54 yards and a touchdown. So Fleener is a streaming option. He is. I think he understands the offense now. Oh, and he's going to drop passes. It's fine. That's Don't be game. a Saints fan. It's his game. It's, yeah. Mike Evans drops passes. It's normal. Ted Ginn drops passes. It's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. What happens? Alvin Kamari looked great. I might I might even go as far as to say he looked the best of all the backs. And Sean Payton really likes him. In fact, he said he likes him more than Sproles. Ouch. Uh, you should like him too. Those are some bold words. He's going to see the ball, and I think if everyone's getting the ball passed around some, he might get it more passed to him than we think, um, especially with AP. 
I don't know if anyone saw that or played him, uh. but that was rough. Um, AP played in just nine um, attempts, so I don't know. It's not. It's and then not he was good. stalking Sean Payton on the side. Oh lines. yeah. Oof. Oh yeah. It was. That's not healthy. Um, so Adrian Peterson got the start, but only rushed for six times for 18 yards, which isn't awful. But um, he got some looks in the goal line, but he was not able to deliver. So I don't know. It's not. It's not amazing. It's not amazing. Brandon Coleman and Tommy Lee Lewis both uh, had two caught two of their three targets, just stealing targets from Thomas and Jen. Don't. Don't buy into that. Willie Sneed is still suspended. Minnesota Vikings and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those Vikings, Kyle Rudolph, while not snagging much yardage, 26 mm. yards on three catches to be exact. He did catch all of his targets and was able to bring in a touchdown. Boom. They um, were all good. They were all good. So good. Minnesota. So good. Go Vikings. Dalvin mm. Cooks looked really strong and certainly did not make the Vikings fans miss AP at all. He rocked 22 times and ran for 127 yards. Boom. Um, he mm. was in for 51 of the 65 snaps, so he played a lot. A lot, a lot. So we're okay. No committee mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Love him. Stefan Diggs. Woo! Get that guy some water because he's on fire. Catching seven of his eight targets for 93 yards and two touchdowns. I'll tell you, I do not own Stefan Diggs. So I was like, stop throwing that man the ball. Even though I don't think I was playing against him anywhere either. But I was like, come on. I mean, I had Sam Bradford, so it was fine. It was good. Just keep throwing, I suppose. Yeah. But we're Adam Thielen, people. But he also had a killer night. Nine of his pet targets for 157 yards. What? What? Over 20 fantasy points in PPR? Woo! Woo! Yikes. I'm in love. Play them both. Play them both. Yep. This was defense looked filthy good as well. You're playing them. Sleepers, I'm not going to lie. Jarek McKinnon impressed me. He rushed three times for five yards and caught all three of his targets for 32 yards. So it's nothing fantastic. But when he was there and he had a job, he did it. So in a deep, deep league and a flex option, he's worth that look at because I think he will continue to get involved. Um, obviously, Dalvin Cook is, has nothing to be concerned about. But Jarek McKinnon can be that second punch that some running backs and offenses need to have a moment of break and you are relying on a guy who gets it done. So it's possible that McKinnon can, could be that um, during the season. Um, and attention, Andrew Luck owner, Sam Bradford is still available in most leagues. He has the easiest schedule of all quarterbacks this year and actually looks super, super good. Go get him. 27 to 32 passes for 346 Yards and three touchdowns. Woo! No interceptions. Shh, none. It was yeah. like the only one. Good for him. All I right. Stand those. alone. I stand alone. Sam Bradford, Alex Smith. We're in week one. <laughs> <laughs> the only people not to throw an interception. That's the so worst good. song that's ever been written. I like it. I like it. Yeah. All right, Brandon, the Steelers. Oh, oh, the Steelers. Okay, Antonio Brown. Can we? Uh, here's the deal. Remember me talking about math all preseason, and I was like, listen, if you think Antonio Brown is going to be a stud, which he is, if you think Le'Veon Bell is going to be a stud, which he was not, but, you know, week one, um, and you think Ben Roethlisberger is not a stud, which he was not, then how can you love Martavis Bryant for the fourth round? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Math is still a thing. So here's the deal. Le'Veon Bell, you're still going to start him even against this, the Minnesota Vikings defense because he's a bell cow. Stop it. Uh, Chris Boswell, though, I am going to mention that because the kickers are so crazy that you do want to start him. I think they're actually going to kick a lot of field goals. He didn't have to kick field goals last week because the Saints, they just, you know, are um, against the Browns. Um but listen, uh, yeah, I think they're going to kick some field goals in a close game with the Vikings. Uh, Jesse James is going to be on a sleeper list. I know he was a stud. He, th he caught two touchdowns. But listen, the Cleveland Browns gave up the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends last year. That was the game plan going in. Um, and so uh, they're not going to do that again. But Kobe Fleener did score a touchdown last week. So maybe he'll be in a position again to score another touchdown. So if you need to take a flyer. But he's certainly not someone I would trust in season-long leagues moving forward. Uh, they did bring in Vance McDonald 
called because they weren't impressed with him. So that says something. Ben Roethlisberger uh, could only put up 263 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception against the Browns. Uh, the Vikings are nasty, so I wouldn't start him even though he's playing at home, which is normally his flavor. And again, Martavis Bryant, I told you, boomer bust. And I'm sorry, I'm not starting a boomer bust guy against the Minnesota Vikings defense. Oof. Sue me. And Oof. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers defense looks like Sam Bradford doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> you heard me dalton you heard me <laughs> you heard me all right chicago bears at tampa bay i'm just gonna plug right through we got go, chicago go, bears go, go, i'm go. sorry stop it you guys you are acting like jordan howard had a horrible game he did not he actually scored 15 fantasy points in ppr formats uh 13 in standard uh, you know you guys yes he has less carries but we always knew he was not a pass catching back that's not who he is play by the matter though is that he actually got hurt he's questionable with a shoulder injury and actually that may have added to that drop in the uh the near where he could have maybe scored a game tying touchdown a game winning touchdown actually uh which is all anyone thinks about and everyone's like oh Tariq cohen is amazing listen atlanta has always given up a ton of points to pass catching running backs that was the best game plan that they had to beat the atlanta falcons who won the nfc last year they did a great job i was actually impressed with chicago bears in general uh and Tariq cohen is going to be involved but he's only five foot six 180 pounds, so he's a little bit of a bowling ball, but still, he's not a three down back. That's not what they want from him. In fact, during his own press conference, he compared he and Jordan Howard to LeBron and Isaiah Thomas, which is cute and naive, but <laughs> he doesn't think that he is going to be doing this by himself. So, I mean, come on now, people. Come on now. Oh, All right. And, and by the way, I think he thinks that Jordan Howard is LeBron. He's Isaiah Thomas because he's new, uh, which is adorable. So if you're calling your coworker LeBron James, you're fine with that. Yeah. Sleepers is Kendall Wright just because now that Kevin White is out for the season, which he is, um, uh, with a fractured sc uh, scapula, I, you know, Kendall Wright's the only guy there. I mean, I still, I mean, he only caught three of his four targets for 34 yards against Atlanta because he has Mike Glennon. Bench is Josh Mel Bellamy and Tanner Gentry. I'm only saying their names because they are probably two people you need to know um, for possible really, really deep leagues. Tanner Gentry was moved up from the practice squad, and he actually was the preseason darling that Trubisky loved. So this second Trubisky goes in there. I really like Tanner Gentry moving forward. Don't start the defense or kicker, although their defense looked really good, and they are not a doormat this year, uh, but I'm just not going to start them in um, this particular matchup because they didn't get any turnovers, although Atlanta doesn't do a lot of turnovers, but they stopped a lot of yardage, so they're a very interesting prospect moving forward. All right, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're starting. Jameis Winston, we have no stats to give you from last week, seeing how they had the forced buy, which means, hey, guys, you're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as long as you can play them because they're going to be playing 16 games straight, no break, no rest, no time to recoup. Think about how to readjust your team if it's not going well. So best of luck, Tampa Bay. I'd say that to the Miami Dolphins, but they have Cutler. We'll be fine. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're starting, Winston. The Bears gave up 321 yards to the Falcons last week. They're going to give up yards to Mr. Winston and the rest of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not concerned. You're starting the best wide receiver in fantasy football, Mike Evans. I think he had 180 yards, seven touchdowns last week. So at home in his backyard. So I think you're fine. I think he's going to do great. <laughs> he's going to do really good. It only took 45 targets, but he did it. <laughs> it only took 45 targets. He caught 21 of them, but it's fine. It's good. Uh <laughs> Averaging one yard after the catch. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> oh, okay. Your sleepers, Jack Reese Rogers. Okay. There are things that we love about Rogers. Overall, he is proven that he can play just take that step of performance in the fantasy championship week where he stepped in for Doug Martin a healthy scratch by the way and scored 13.5 fantasy points so we know the potential is there on the other hand I can see a situation where the bucks go up big and Rodgers is left to pound the running game too so I think that really either way it goes whether they don't use him much the first half and then they use him a lot the second half. I still think he's going to get you the fantasy points. Deshaun Jackson, as I mentioned above, the Bears are great at shopping number or stopping number one wide receivers. So that leaves Deshaun Jackson up. 
for the grabs. I kind of like Jackson this time. I think he's a great flyer this week. Uh, he's not always going to be must start. It's going to be interesting to see how he works with this team um, during regular season. But I like him this week. He's a boomer bust player. Um, but that's okay. Well, I think he's going to have a big boom this week. Cameron Bright. Woo! Play him, guys. Play him. I want to... I. I record at my parents' house because I've got children and I don't want them to interrupt me or me to wake them up. But uh, my our father was like, why does nobody have O.J. Howard? What's going on? What's happening? I go, well, O.J. Howard blocks. And Cam or Cameron Bray is Jameis Winston's favorite. I mean, let's just be honest. It's his favorite. So Jameis Winston's – or Cameron Bray is the guy. So if you're going to start a tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it needs to be Cammy Cam. Cameron Bray. All right, we have the mm -hmm. Miami Dolphins at the Los Angeles Chargers. All right, this is actually going to be really quick because, again, the Dolphins didn't play. So if you drafted someone as a starter, you should start them. That's Jay Ajayi specifically. Uh, listen, the Chargers allowed 19 touchdowns to opposing running backs in 2016, which was tied with Washington and Cleveland for the third most in the league. Uh, you should feel good about that. He is listed as questionable with a back injury, but he is practicing in full, and he should be fine. Devontae Parker, Car Cutler loves him. You want to start him? Do it. Uh, sleepers is going to be Cutler. Uh, you could argue that this is a good matchup since Trevor Simeon did so well last week. You could also say that um, he's probably going to throw four interceptions. So it depends on your league settings. And Julius Thomas, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like him, but you do you. And Jarvis Landry, great player and possession receiver, uh, have some has some off field the field issues, and it's really questionable as to what his role is moving forward. I could see him doing uh, having a great game and surprising everyone, and I could also see him with like three targets and going for eighteen yards. So it's it's that's why he is in the sleeper category. The bench is Miami defense. Uh, listen, Philip Rivers is good at the beginning of the season. So there you go. And Cody Parkey, they cut Franks and they're going with Parkey, but I don't know what's going on here. Chargers, uh, listen, I told you Melvin Gordon would do well. He actually did really well. I know they didn't win the game. It was a great game, by the way. Um, great game. 18 carries for 54 yards, five catches off of six targets for 25 yards and a touchdown. Lather, rinse, repeat. That's who he is. Good for you, Melvin Gordon. Philip Rivers, Miami gave up the fifth most fantasy points to quarterbacks in 20, 2016. Rivers, Always has a strong start, so I say go for it. Keenan Allen uh, got a team-high 10 targets on Monday Night Football, but he only caught five of them for 35 yards. He did score a touchdown, which saved him, but he's uh, working out some week one stuff too. Uh, and Tyrell Williams caught five of his seven targets for 54 yards. He didn't score a touchdown, but it does look like it's a share there, and he looked pretty good to me. He was making some pretty great catches. So uh, sleepers, Travis Benjamin actually caught three of his four targets for 43 yards and a touchdown which made him a decent fantasy play, but the target share is obviously much lower for him, so warning on that. Antonio Gates and Hunter Henry, fascinating. Hunter Henry out-snapped uh, Gates during the first half, and then the second half, it was like almost all Gates. It was very um, much about the Broncos' defense and how they were getting their butt kicked for a while there, and so they were trying different formations. I'm not going to totally freak out, but I'm also not going to start either of them frankly. I want to see how this works out. This did not look good to me. Just warning, warning, warning. The Chargers defense, again, interceptions, Cutler, and Young Wei Koo uh, is their rookie kicker who did miss that game tying field goal at the end after being iced. I feel for him. They're going to keep going to him, but I'd like to see him rebound first. All right, the New York Jets of the Oakland Raiders, the Jets, no starters on this team. Come on, period, but tough matchup as well. The only two mm. positions on this team that have a decent uh, matchup are quarterbacks, and we're not starting, Josh McCowan, and the tight ends. And if you're like, who's the tight end on this team? I didn't know either. I had to look it up. It's Will Ty, you guys. Will Ty. Woo. Until Austin uh, Spray and Jenkins comes back from suspension, and then we have to talk about him again. I hate you, Jets. Uh, listen, I do not want to do it. Will Ty caught all three of his targets for 34 yards, and I'm not saying to start Ty, but I bet he is going to lead lead in receptions for the Jets in week two. I'm mm. just saying it. I mean, I did call Jamal Char or Charles Clay. I'm not saying Will Ty is going to have a Charles Clay day, but I'm just saying if you're in a deep league and you need a streamer, it might be the best option here. Uh, and listen, the problem with Below Powell and Matt Forte is although they are the two best players on the team, they just aren't going to get the opportunity. The Jets are going to get behind. They're going to have to throw the ball. They're going to, you know, try to dig themselves out of the hole. And the Raiders, 
I'm not going up against the Raiders defense and the awesome offense that's going to be scoring tons of points on the Jets. It's just, it's not healthy as for the Raiders. So the Raiders are playing the Jets. So you're starting all of them. Derek Carr had a great game last week, 262 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's on the list of the Sam Bradfords. Congratulations. Um, Tyra Taylor owned almost the exact same fantasy points as Carr last week against the Jets. So I think that Carr's going to have even more fantasy points this week than he had in week one. So you're good to go. Amari Cooper, he's on the injury report. I believe it's a sore knee like he had the week before. He played through. Um, he was able to get 62 yards and a touchdown. I'm starting him this week, but you better keep an eye on his injury and make sure it's nothing more serious as the week goes on. As for Michael Crabtree, with half of the targets, Crabtree had over 20 more yards than Cooper. Crabtree gets it done. That's what he do, does. I'm definitely playing him. I like him. I like him a lot. Marshawn Lynch, there's no question that Beast Mode is still has his mojo. This is a great matchup <laughs> for him. I love it. He had 18 touches last week. I don't seem to have more carries than that, uh, probably, but he'll be just as productive, if not more productive, against the Jets. Jared Cook is their tight end, and Cook caught all five of his targets for 56 yards. And he is the perfect tight end if you're streaming a tight end as well. We all saw what Charles Clay did to the Jets last week. So it could be Jared Cook's turn this week. I like there's, it. There's no sleepers. There's no bench. You're starting them all. All right, Dallas Cowboys, the Denver Broncos. Well, Ashley wrote her own notes, but she wrote things like, um, Ashley told us that, and I can't believe Ashley was right about, so I can't wait to read these notes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Des Bryant was targeted a lot with nine targets, but he only caught two of them for 43 yards. I don't know if you want to start any of the wideouts against Denver, but if you have Des Bryant, you're starting it regardless. He just needs a touchdown, you guys. He just needs needs a touchdown right. and they did give those up the Denver Broncos did yes they did so uh we'll see it's gonna be an intense game uh, Ezekiel Elliott as expected was great 24 carries for 104 yards caught five passes for 36 yards much more involved in the passing game than we thought however there is some legal drama update the NFL um did you know file an appeal uh, of Ezekiel Elliott's primary pre preliminary injunction uh the, if the NFL wins the appeal he has to serve a suspension right away however these appeals usually take a little bit of time Time, so um, I think you just have to move forward. Continue to next episode, right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, dun, 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 dun. Exactly. I mean, you know, if you're looking for his backup, though, we thought it was McFadden. Looks like it might be Alfred Morris. So Woo! intriguing, intriguing, everybody. Um, you want to definitely stay tuned. Uh, Ashley told us that Dak Prescott <laughs> was not going to be as bad as everyone was predicting him to be. He completed 24 of 39 passes for 280, 268 yards at a touchdown. Um, you can expect similar numbers from the Broncos. Dan Bailey, every week starter, obviously. I can't believe that Ashley was right that Jason Witten was going to play a bigger role this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got seven of his nine targets for 59 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and then also he became the Cowboys all-time leading receiver, which was a really cool moment, actually. Um, yeah, and then Terrence Williams is better, actually, in this rotating wideouts uh, than Dez. Got six passes for 68 yards. Cole Beasley, 32 yards off of three catches. I thought they both looked good. Cole Beasley's catch on the back of his jersey was sweet. Oh, sick. They should, they should have reward him this week. That's right. They need to reward him against the Broncos. So dare I say that Demarius Thomas is back? He never really left, I suppose. Woo! Always a thousand yards. Maybe. Oh, he did so good, so good. It is six or seven yards. Oh, Fowler vultured two touchdowns from him. You jerk! It's like who is this Benny Fowler that's been on our team for like ten years and hasn't done anything? Oh, I that know. guy. They've kept him around for so long. So long. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Every year I'm like, oh, so really? Good. Again? And then Cody Latimer, I was like, who are you? Who are you? How are you not cut already? It's crazy. Um, Emmanuel Sanders also suffered a bit fantasy points uh, wise. The touchdowns going to Fowler. It, it was just a tough game for Sanders and Thomas. But guess what? San Diego Chargers defense is legit. And not only do they have guys on the line, they have guys in the secondary, one of the best corners in the league. It's it's a real thing going on in San Diego. So I think I think it's going to be better for these guys this week. CJ Anderson, obviously you're going to start. He had a great night, rushed 20 times, which I was not expecting. 81 yards and had a catch for seven yards. Um 
I think it'll be good. Uh, Charles still is coming in with 10 touches or so. Um, I don't think you should let Jamal Charles. Is fumble. It was not a fumble. Not a fumble. His elbow was down anyway. I know. And hopefully the coaches see that and they don't punish Charles because I, I, I don't, I don't know. I know. I, you just can't, you can't, you can't. Denver's defense obviously is a must start. Um, they said that they wanted to give Jamal Charles around 10 touches a game. And that's exactly what they did. I think that he's a low flex option at this point, if you need him. Um, but I think he's going to be more in the game than we think leading in, like as the season goes on, uh, as he said, don't be, don't be cute with Benny Fowler yet. You guys, he only was targeted four times. Now, yes, this was 21 yards and two touchdowns, but I, I'm not convinced that this is like a real thing. Like, it was a fantasy land. We lived it in week one. I don't think it's going to happen again. And, I, oh, my gosh, they have tight ends for the Denver Broncos. Crazy. Mm -mm. Crazy. They were coming out everywhere. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> but there's a lot of them. There's, like, three or four of them. So that's not hot. Um, so I'm not buying in on any of them at this point. It, it, too risky to know who's going to get the uh, targets. Uh, Trevor Simeon had a pretty decent showing. Um, but it's Simeon. We're going to say no thank you at this point the washington redskins at the los angeles roms all right the redskins oh they were so cute last week um they did really bad all of them not a single one had a good game the highest scoring person was chris thompson who's a running back if you did not know for the washington redskins he had 11 fantasy points um over 11 fantasy points in standard links um other than that everybody else really suffered um against Philadelphia. And listen, the Rams defense is pretty darn good. So it, the Redskins have the toughest schedule in the league comparatively across the whole board. So you have to temper your expectations with all of them for these few games that they're going to be tough. But you're going to start Terrell Pryor. Uh, you're going to start your Jordan Reed. You drafted him. I'm sticking with Jamison Crowder. I don't care what you people say. Josh Doxson is questionable. I doubt he's going to play. I think that's going to give more time for Jamison Crowder. Uh, so I'm in. I'm I'm in. Brent, what are your thoughts? Uh, what? Better. I mean, Crowder yeah, isn't he, hurt. He was hurt. He was hurt. And I don't, everybody's settings are different because I own Crowder in almost every single league. And he got different fantasy points in every league I own him in. Um, so your settings are all different. If Whether they, they counted that as a fumble, did the kick return or not, um, his yardages were different in all of them as well. Um, so it just kind of depends. Just look at it. Uh, look at your settings for future instances when some, that, something like that might happen. But he, but Rob Kelly saw uh, ha only had ten attempts on the ground, uh, which is not hot. Now, granted, they were down, so they had to abandon the run some. Uh, but as we said, Chris Thompson was able to get double digit fantasy points. So I have never liked this backfield, and I still don't like this backfield. I know some people love Fat Rob. I'm not that. I'm not that person. Never have been, and I'm still not. He got you three fantasy points last week, so. You do you, but that's not where I'm going. Sorry. As for Kirk Cousins, I'm kind of up in the air. I don't love him. I don't love him this week. I I, I mean, he's fine. Uh, he was in that territory where, like, if you draft one of these guys, you want to follow up with another guy. Hopefully it's another guy that has a good matchup for you um, because the Rams' defense is legit, and their offense looked really darn good, and when both are really – flowing well it only helps um the overall flow of that team so it's not it's not my favorite you guys I'm kind of staying away brandon all right for the los angeles rams say it with me now cooper cup, cooper cup. Okay. Cooper cup. okay well i caught four of his six pa uh targets for 76 yards and a touchdown respect my authority yeah, yeah. Right, there you go. That's all I'm gonna say about that because he should already be on your team because I've been talking about him nonstop. And if you listen to the show, you know that. Uh, Los Angeles Rams defense. I'm starting them again because you know what? Washington's offense looked lost. I know that they have a new offensive coordinator and they're worried, but man, I wasn't worried and I think I was wrong. Anyway, Todd Gurley, however, I'm gonna be real with you. Gurley did not look good. No. He played against the Colts. He only went 40 yards off of 19 carries. He did catch five of his six targets for 56 yards. He scored one rushing touchdown. Man, I might sell high when I can. 
if you can only do that against the Colts, what's he going to do the rest of the season against anybody else? I'm very worried about him. You're not worried. You're not, you don't think that maybe the, uh, the Rams are trying to work out some kinks and trying to figure out chemistry and stuff on the field. Mm -hmm. They don't really have to do that with Gurley, you know. They needed to do that with Goff and Watkins and everybody else. Cup. He had 24 touches. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. That's the thing. He had the volume. You're right. You're right. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Uh, Sammy Watkins is under my sleepers. He did catch all five of his targets, but it was only for 58 yards. Um, And this week he's going to get the Josh Norman treatment, which is why Cooper Cup's going to just grab it all. Yeah. Grab it all. So, uh, and Jared Goff, I'm going to put in the sleepers. I know I sounded crazy by saying I think Jared Goff's going to improve, but man, he looked really good. He went over 300 yards against the Colts. He only scored one touchdown, but again, it was because of game script. He didn't need to do more than that. So, um, yeah, I kind of like him against Washington because other than Josh Norman, they don't have a good defense. So, uh, yeah, if you, if one of your, if you were late round quarterbacking it, and let's say you started Dalton or Manning or someone else who just was terrible. I might start golf instead. I'm dead serious. You get out there and you figure it out. He is one of the best lower tier quarterbacks that you could dream of. And on the bench is Malcolm Brown, but keep an eye on him. I want to say his name. If this Todd Gurley thing doesn't work out, I think they're going to keep going to Malcolm Brown. Gerald Everett, he only had one target, but he caught it, and it went for 39 yards as a tight end. Uh, he's a rookie tight end. He'll get worked into the system. Um, but I'm telling you, this guy is the future. And Robert Woods is fine, but Tavon Austin had a fumble. He is completely out. I'm not into either of them. Mm, perfect. All right. We have the San Francisco 49ers against the Seattle Seahawks. It could rain. It's just like one more element that the Mm. 49ers may not need. Listen, if you drafted Carlos Hyde, you knew what you're getting yourself into. Okay? So that's what it is. That's what it is. He did get six. I did catch all six of his targets. um, And I would expect him to do to get even more targets this week. I am saying that he will probably get more targets than he will get rushing attempts this week. So in PPR, this is a great option. Uh, If not, I'm sorry. But you got him. Uh, Pierre Garçon against Richard uh, Richard Sherman doesn't give me warm feelings inside. It just doesn't. And there's nobody else on this team. So we're done. Uh, for the Seattle Seahawks, Doug Baldwin Oof. did not have the game that we were hoping for. Uh, but he did catch all four of his passes for 63 yards. So it's not awful. Uh, it's the 49ers. You're going to play him. Paul Richardson, you can play him, I think, too. I, I like both of them. Um, you know, Tyler Lockett didn't see as many targets. So I, I'm not buying in on him. Although it is against the 49ers. So anything can happen. Tyler Lockett's that boomer bust guy. So you, you never know. Um it was not a good day for Jimmy Graham catching only three of his seven targets um, for whooping eight yards. Ooh. But if he can't do well against the 49ers, this is another kind of moment. I think he'll be fine. It's early. It was it was week one. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Russell Wilson uh, did not have his best week. But again, it's the 49ers. You're starting your studs. You drafted him. We're going to play him. Seattle's defense against the, against the Niners. Yes, please. I benched the Seattle defense last week for the Carolina Panthers. Best decision of my life. It's the only way I beat. Um, I ended up beating my husband. Um, but you're playing the Seattle defense this week for sure. Coach Pete Carroll said Thomas Rawls' ankle will play week two against the 49ers. Eddie Lacy was only able to get three yards off of five touches. Um, and Chris Carson is still making a name for himself with 39 yards off of six touches and 10-yard catch. But listen, that is a crowded backfield. That is a lot of freaking people. And none of them. With a bad offensive line. Yeah, with a bad offensive line. And there's CJ Procise too. There's so many. There's so many. many. Four guys. I don't know. I think that's a little crazy to try to to pick one and roll with it. It's not not my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. No. Uh, we have the Green Bay Packers and the Atlanta Falcons. All right, you guys. Well, none of the Packers were exceedingly fabulous against the Seattle Seahawks, but they were better than most people against the Seattle Seahawks, so I felt fine about Hashtag it. Hashtag year of the cob. Hashtag year of the cob. As a- Ashley, I can't believe Hashtag that Ashley said. 
I'm going to write that into my notes now. I can't yeah. believe. Well, like <laughs> Ashley said, uh, so Aaron Rodgers, listen, he's going up against the Falcons. That should be A-OK. -okay. And he did get over 300 passing yards. He only scored one touchdown, but it was against the Seattle Seahawks. So, yeah, guys, stop complaining. Jordy Nelson scored that one touchdown because that's what he does. Uh, Randall Cobb is getting a lot of work, caught nine of his 13 targets for 85 yards. He's an interesting matchup. Devontae Adams, and listen, he only caught three of his seven targets for 47 yards, but he's going to bounce back against the Falcons defense. I feel fine about it. Okay. Um, Mason Crosby, this should be a high scoring game. Ty Montgomery, though, was the most interesting part of the game against the Seahawks. Um, he was able uh, to be kind of good. 19 carries for 54 yards and a rushing touchdown. He caught all four of his targets for 39 yards. Jamal Williams only got two carries for nine yards. So don't worry about a committee. I think that what, what's going on here is that we're just not quite sure Ty Montgomery is going to stay healthy, but it's not really a committee. Do you understand? More mm -hmm. handcuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, the Bears running backs put up over 100. 10 rushing yards and over 60 receiving yards against the Falcons last week. So you do you. Sleepers, not really a sleeper. I think I actually want to put him on the bench. Martellus Bennett caught three of his six targets for 43 yards. Kendricks caught two of his four targets for 18 yards. I just don't know if they need tight ends. I'm just being honest with you. Uh, and the bench, don't start the Packers defense versus the Falcons. Speaking of the Falcons, um, listen, uh, they're fine, you guys. Uh, again, Matt Ryan had over 320 yards, okay, passing. Yes, he only scored one touchdown, but again, a must start. Austin Hooper, though. <laughs> Dang, 128 yards, but only off of two catches, which were his only two targets. He was the fourth highest in receiving yards out of the entire league. Wide receivers, everybody. Unbelievable in week one. Uh, and that's with Adam Thielen, you know? I mean, you got to... <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> look for more usage for him going forward. Devontae Freeman, uh, listen, the Bears' defense was no joke last week, and they really keyed in on him, but he still got 37 yards, carrying the ball 12 times. Luckily, he scored a touchdown, so he'll be fine. Julio Jones went four for five for 66 yards. Listen, you need to target your wide receiver one more than five times in a game. I don't know what yeah. they were doing. Obviously, they're getting used to a new coordinator, but that was just wrong. And um, Matt Bryant, obviously. Tevin Coleman, you know, actually, he did okay. He got four of his six targets for 42 yards, but uh, eight carries only went for 16 yards. That's not good. Uh, Muhammad Sanu, he got the team high nine targets, but it was all dink and dunk. It was only uh, for 47 yards, six catches. It's just, you know, so I don't know. But he's definitely the guy over Taylor Gabriel, like we've been telling you this whole time. Don't play your defense against our Rogers. Boom. Detroit Lions, the New York Giants last game of week two. The Lions. The Golden Tate is listed as questionable, so keep an eye on him. But he did great last week. No yeah. touchdown, but had over 100 yards. Looked fabulous. Found a nice little safe spot in the slot. I'm into it. I think he's going to have another nice game. Great play in PPR. Matthew Stafford is right there on the line of starters for me. There are a lot of scary options out there for quarterbacks, but this week, most of the elite quarterbacks or top quarterbacks have nice matchups. So I don't know if you're going to need to plug in Matthew Stafford this week. You're going to need him if, you know, obviously if he's your number one guy. But if you give him as your backup, most likely you're not going to need him to put him in this week against the Giants defense that only gave up one passing touchdown last week. Beware of Galladay. He was great last week for four receptions for 69 yards and two touchdowns. If he's on your waivers, pick him up. Mm -hmm. Starting against the Giants for the first time for you might not be the best. It might be amazing because the Giants can be so busy with Golden Tate and maybe focusing on Marvin Jones. Um, but it's week two. Let's just say that. It's mm -hmm. week two. I'm with um, you. Yeah. But I'm getting him on my team. Yes, absolutely. Pick him up. Get him on your team, especially if you have somebody who can move to IR, which some of us have. Um, he is the perfect guy to fill in in that spot. And, you know, there might just be too many mouths to feed for it to be a consistent thing with the two of them, which is Galladay and Marvin Jones. Maybe Marvin Jones is going to be left in the dust. I'm not sure. I'm not. I think Jones might be able to stay the wide receiver too, but Galladay, he's such a big target. And I love that. I love that. Um, Eric Ebron did exactly what he does best. Got nine yards. Mm. Love it. Um, I just think he will always be that boomer bus player who busts a lot. That potential guy that just never, never serves his purpose. Yeah, that's him. Um, 
Also on my bench, the running backs. I'm sorry, theoretic. Amir Abdullah, Dwayne Washington. I, I, I mean, it's such a split backfield back there. It's not healthy for your fantasy team. Let me tell you that right now. It's not healthy. If you have to pick one of them, it's definitely theoretic, especially in PPR. But man, it's scary in that Detroit backfield when it comes to fantasy value. So I'm not, I'm not buying in. The Giants. This offense sucks. Like I'm just uh, done being even remotely. What are you talking about? about so many weapons. It's it's Eli Manning. So many weapons. Potential. Everybody. Such ah, a good year. This is his year so again. Many sleepers. This is his year again. I know sucks. I said it in 2015 and 2016, but 2017 it's gonna be his year. Oh my god. <laughs> People. I just I, it's not just Eli either. It's been McAdoo too. I think this just yeah. the offense sucks. I just think the offense sucks and I don't know what to do about it. I'll tell you this though. If Odell Beckham Jr. is playing, you're gonna start him, obviously. And supposedly people are optimistic about him playing in week two. He was a scratch in uh week one, and that's unfortunate. So um, but yeah, other than that, listen, sleepers, I guess Shane Vereen. He had the team high targets at 10, team high catches at nine, but it was only for 51 yards. Evan Engram actually looked good. He and Sterling Shepard did their jobs. I mean, I I mean, talk about two guys that were trying to hustle like crazy. Yeah. Uh, but still, Shepard caught seven of his eight targets for 44 yards, and Engram caught four of his five targets for 44 yards. They just have low ceilings right now, just really, really low ceilings. And the bench, Brandon Marshall caught one of his four targets for 10 yards. Perfect. No. no. Perfect. Paul Perkins only carried the ball seven times. He went for 16 yards and caught two passes for nine <sighs> yards. No. No, Eli Manning scored the most fantasy points on his team, and he scored 6.7 points in standard scoring. <laughs> However, if he played in PPR leagues because everyone else was doing their job and they were actually making the catches, uh, Shane Vereen, Sterling Shepard, and Evan Engram all scored more points than Manning in PPR settings. Okay. Uh, uh, their defense is great, but they're going to get tired, especially against the Detroit Lions, and you just can't start their kicker because you don't know if they're going to score any points. So That's there you right. go. There you go. Finish on a sad note. Sad Sorry, note. everybody. Tears. Eli Manning. Two-time Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> nothing but respect. But I played fantasy football in 2017, and I just can't do this anymore. He's a game manager, but he's no Alex Smith, if you know what I mean. You oh. know what I mean. Hey. <laughs> All right, you guys. That's our show. That's week two. Make sure to hop over to herfantasyfootball.com to subscribe to us so you can get our injury report, all of our diced ingredients early for our fan duel game. That's fabulous. You can also check our show out on Sirius XM every Saturday night on fan, um, the Fantasy Sports Network from 9 to 11 Eastern. Um, you can chat with us, ask your questions. Sunday morning, we're there at Her Fantasy FB and Facebook on f Facebook slash Her Fantasy Football. It's been a pleasure. Good luck, everyone. Until next time, no more faking it.